you can get enough out of every aspect of your life that you're, you're happy with right it, it it is always a compromise you know so i don't think i'd be as like mentally satisfied like content if i was to drill more into just trying to make money and equally mm-hmm. i don't think i'd be as happy if i was to abandon that more and just do just focus solely on videos that i find personally satisfying to make and stuff do you know what i mean it's always that yeah. kind of like compromise on like where can you exist and to do that you have to kind of separate yourself from where everyone else is trying to exist this video is sponsored by sons sons are a men's health care brand that offer clinically proven licensed hair loss treatment for less than the cost of a coffee every day Follow the link in the description and use the code Kickoff Sessions Forty to avail a forty percent off your first order. All right, bro, let's kick off, man. I'm very, very happy for this. Um, hundred episodes deep. I don't think there's a better guest to uh, to appear on my, my hundred episodes. So you're welcome, man, and I appreciate uh, you taking time out early, early in the day. It's a privilege. You've blessed me with the hundredth episode. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh tmc actually was on the 50th and he said he'd come back for the 100 so maybe i have to give him a, a yeah. pat on the shoulder saying unfortunately yeah. he didn't make it might make the 200 good. episode yeah 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 <laughs> all right man i want to get, get into uh some of the kind of background of first for sure because like you know i think a lot of people would obviously understand the shit you've been doing especially over the last couple of years but i'd love to understand like how you kind of got started and why you kind of really wanted to get started like was there a particular reason why you kind of got into this kind of youtube game online coaching at first because like your backgrounds and maths man obviously a smart guy intelligent dude you could have kind of done anything so was there a particular reason why he was like i'm gonna go down the kind of fitness route yeah yeah so combination of factors really we will have to go right back to the very start and i'll have to tell you because it's more <laughs> like it's part decision and part just that bit of luck that lets you you fall into things right it's mm-hmm. just a million different factors isn't there so um as you say I did maths at uni I wasn't particularly good at maths like not particularly you know above other subjects anyway uh I just didn't I actually was better at English in school Mm -hmm. at least but I just I was more interested in the sciences and uh, I also didn't like writing because that was yeah. in the days like we're in school you were writing not typing right that's how old <laughs> i am like. and uh i thought i'm getting a tired hand here i'd rather do something that was a bit less you know what i mean yeah less labor intensive <laughs> and so uh i actually would have been more inclined towards physics or something like that because that was the side of maths that i enjoyed anyway mm-hmm. really uh but I didn't really get exposed to enough of that in my high school because we did these like instead of your traditional GCSEs what we did like a kind of uh something else that I think I think gives the school I think is equated to a certain schools these days are all about fucking leaderboards right so yeah. I think instead of normal traditional uh like uh, biology chemistry physics GCSEs we did some of the type of combination of them all which gives the school like an equivalence to a certain number of GCSEs which obviously helps them get higher up some leaderboard somewhere Mm -hmm. Uh, but I didn't really the result was I didn't really get exposed to that much physics and so I ended up doing maths because I didn't really know that physics was fucking interesting right yeah so went through my degree and by the time I came out my degree I was kind of sick of it right I was kind of I'd done so much like intense I was kind of like uh like traumatized by the amount of fucking head in book learning abstract things yeah no uh, I, I mean as abstract well. as in the i overuse the word abstract but like abstract algebra is an actual you know yeah just disgusting as a theory topic. right yeah 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 um <clears throat> and so i was kind of like just i thought by the end of uni i thought i don't think i ever want to look at this again right now that combined with looking at grad schemes and stuff like that i just think these days it's just not appealing to people right you know if if i was to type in like maths graduate jobs i'd get all these 
kind of positions where I'd read about what was required, the kind of interview pr- process. You'll go through a few, like a group, an online thing or a telephone call or something, then a group interview, then a, then a one-on-one individual interview. Um, and there'd be just this whole spiel of just jargon mm-hmm. that I am just, it just turns me off. Man. Just like, mm-hmm. you know, I, it really makes me just just despair the fact that you have to like go to an interview and it's not really about your ability as an individual uh you know it's more about how well you can prepare for interviews right which somewhat obviously reflects your you know your ability yeah. as an individual if you know the game play it right uh, and fit the narrative but like i just thought do i want to be sat there and like answering a question on like how i you know deliver the dynamic solution in a group setting being faced with you know all this shit right i thought i don't want to play these games like it really fucking turned me off um <clears throat> and i i have very low like whether th- whether it's you know a feature or a flaw i have a really low tolerance for well i think i can end that sentence i just have low tolerance <laughs> right but it's just yeah. shit i've got no time for <laughs> like I, I don't like entertaining like conversations that i think when there's two people in a conversation and i think you know this is bullshit and i know this is bullshit i think why are we having the conversation right you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, it's going nowhere and it, and it yeah. serves no purpose yeah, yeah yeah so that was one thing that turned me off towards anyway <clears throat> so after you i knew i wanted to travel i didn't know what i wanted to do um and then so I thought, well, I mean, I think a lot of people travel just because they they think it's the right thing to do. Don't know what to do, right? They want yeah. to put off being an adult and entering the work, which is like a fucking great reason to travel. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so like, <clears throat> I'd saved a bit of money in my last couple of years of uni, went and travelled a bit. You know, uh, I came back, I just needed money, so I got a job that was like, it was just it was like financial services contracting. I just got it. One of my mates worked somewhere. For, just working for a bank on like a contractual basis, which was actually suited me pretty well because although you get zero benefits on a contract, you still get a decent day rate. Definitely. So I did that for a while. I think the best part of a year, just while I got myself out of the shit financially, uh, put like a little bit of money behind me, a bit of a nest egg and stuff, uh, and then quit that job. And then I went traveling again, still still trying to put shit off, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was really that trip that, I kind of, you know, I spent a bit of time. I went traveling with, with my brother, but we we also uh, like parted ways at certain points. Where he wanted to stay in Singapore for a bit longer, I wanted to move on to Bali for a bit. I went on my own, so uh, a bit. I spent a lot of time on my own during that trip, and I just thought about like you know what I actually want, right? And, and that's that's the luxury. That's why whenever people, whenever people ask me um, about stuff career wise i think like i always think about how i was lucky in a sense that i'd been able to work for a bit save a bit of money and buy myself some time to just sit there and like assess things right because a lot of time you don't get the opportunity to do that because you come out of uni poor right and you just go straight into a job whichever get a bit of money and then you're in that job and then once you're in a lot of people never really pull the trigger and get back out again do you know what i mean or they're not able to i was living with my parents while i was at my first like proper job so or they're they're not that lucky and they have to like pay rent and this and that and it's like more of a it's harder to get out of right but i was lucky that i had the time uh, and i'd been able to save a bit of money so i could actually just sit there on a beach and think right what the fuck do i want to do yeah. uh, and i didn't come to many conclusions from that uh, i knew that i wanted to travel or be able to travel i knew that i just didn't really have the patience or inclination to exist in an office environment again like i'm sure i could get on in that environment if the you know if the if the if it was right and it was the office was driven towards a goal that i was interested in but Mm -hmm. my previous experience of that had been like you know just part just a just a just a cog in a machine right yeah um and so like i drew a few conclusions right i want to be able to travel don't really want to be you know uh like in that kind of office like it's the hierarchy really that i think is most mm-hmm. just damaging to the soul man. Um, man do you think uh there was an element there to like the kind of pressure around it that you were able to avoid that by like saving up cash because like 
what you're kind of alluding to there is like a lot of people will get into shit and they can't really get out of it. And they feel under a lot of pressure, then they're kind of like compounded by it. And I definitely even felt that myself. Like it's interesting to see you had that early perspective of you don't want to do the maths, you don't want to do basic shit or the traditional shit. Like, did that come from solo traveling, do you think, or was it more because it's hard to have that thought in, in the moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um to be honest, I couldn't really tell you. I couldn't mm. if, if I told you I'd be doing that thing where you kind of fill in memories with you know <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't really tell you um I think it was like it was gradual I always ever since I was like just as, as long as I can possibly remember I always had a, a kind of urge to do something that was a little bit just out of the ordinary now I don't know if that's like ego related I don't know or if it's just because I really have a, just an aversion to like anything like predictable you know what I mean like predictability and I, and I, I know this might sound, it might sound a bit cliche because everyone these days you know is online going like fuck the nine to five that's not what I'm trying to do right yeah. a, a nine to five can be great I'm, I'm sure like you know but it has to be the right one right um but I, I was just, I just, I've always had this sense that I just wanted to, I wanted something a bit more, a bit more weird, man, a bit, a bit more unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, <clears throat> there was like, there was that, there was me coming to that kind of half realization. And then also uh, when I came back from this trip, uh, that was around the time when there was like the beginnings of a kind of online fitness scene right mm -hmm. so there was like a couple of people getting a following um and like a few of my mates then from school who i didn't necessarily actually hang around with quite a lot of them in school but they'd all started training in my gym and we became mates and the, there was a group of us so then just almost just by chance and sheer luck there was a group of us that were kind of into training at similar stages in our lives and uh aware of this kind of online fitness scene mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> we started making videos uh that were just really like uh i would say it was comedy slash humor <laughs> type yeah. you know theme like it was more just ironic stuff we it was more just like poking fun at things and taking the piss out mm -hmm. of things I'm making these videos and like putting them on Facebook, got a little like Facebook page. Uh, and that kind of was completely unrelated to any, uh, to any kind of notion of making money. Right. I was still sat there thinking, what the fuck am I going to do with my life? Right. <laughs> making Just, these fucking Facebook videos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't think that that would ever translate mm. into anything remotely profitable. Right. Um, <clears throat> and I suppose to to uh, summarize, like we kind of gathered a bit of a following doing that kind of stuff, and at the same time, everyone in this group, right, gradually stopped being interested in filming funny shit and putting it on the internet, right? And I was still interested in that. And as other people fell off, I was always I was left with the choice, right? Because it's so easy to be enthused about something and do something when you're in a group of your mates, right? Isn't it? Like, yeah. how good it, would it be to all have that? Like, in hindsight, imagine if we all had the knowledge of how big, like, online fitness the whole gonna scene be. was going to be. Maybe we would have all, like, carried on. And maybe instead of me being a YouTuber now, me and all my mates would have a joint thing mm -hmm. you know who who knows right anyway everyone one by one kind of like fucked it off uh and i was kind of faced with the choice like carry on with shit on your own you know mm -hmm. or don't and then eventually it kind of clicked to me that hang on a minute there's probably enough people here that like i could do this as a job like this i could survive off this uh and so then i kind of started that gradual that gradual transition I thought, well, you know, how am I gonna how am I gonna monetize this in any way? And for mm -hmm. a long time, uh, I 
the answer to that was not successfully because uh, I was so kind of conflicted. You, you, they, you're so idealistic, right, that there's this weird gray area when you're doing stuff online, uh, when you're making videos and stuff like that, because even that to this day, it is like a struggle for me to like blend the idea of making money with the idea of making stuff that I like. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's that that's like, for, I suppose some people I've found a way now nowadays to kind of do both. Right. But now I do them separately pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, whereas I try to make them the same thing. Right. And some people can do that because what you love doing uh, happens to be also the best way to make money. Right. Mm -hmm. But eventually, like I found that it was better for me to, to kind of, you know, separate those things. Um, so, I mean, I can go into. I often see that with people reverting back to the means. So you see that in like a career aspect, like you said there initially, right? People go back and do their own, you know, the traditional career, whatever. And then even in the online space now, which are doing something that's quite unique, obviously now there's a lot of people doing it, but back then it was very unique. Even in that example, you found yourself going back and just doing the stuff that makes money and things that weren't necessarily interesting you as much. And now you're at that kind of paradigm whereby how do you do things you actually genuinely enjoy and you like, but also, you know, provides an income, provides actually a very good income as well at that. Um, how, how do you, how do you separate those or how do you try to combine those in what you're doing now and, and not go back to the traditional fitness shit that you see online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of ways. I still don't do it uh, entirely, right? It's still not entirely separate, right? Because there are some videos on my main YouTube channel that I really get a lot from making. Mm -hmm right? Uh, but also are somewhat profitable. They're never the most of both. They're always like a, a compromise, right? So I'll go back to originally, I would I would make these vlogs and I'd maybe I'd maybe like have a couple of like, fairly, fairly low paid like sponsorships that I would subsist off. I would do like a bit of like online coaching programs, meal plans, and that kind of stuff. Um, and I'd, I'd never, ever push anything. I would never say to anyone, oh, by the way, if you want me to make you a fucking training program, there's a link in the description. I would never, ever say that. Still, I still wouldn't say that now, basically. Mm -hmm. Still still not now. I, I st still, the major majority of the, the money that I make off that kind of stuff now is just people just happen to wander into a, a video description and click it. Like, I literally never push that kind of stuff now yeah. and I never have. Right. But I never used to even push anything. I, I wouldn't say like, oh, this is the, this is this that I use or, or etc. because I was just super like idealistic about that. But then it comes to a point where you're like, well, you know, is this like long-term, is it even viable? Right. Is it, is it feasible to do yeah. long-term? Right. Um, and so for a long time what i did was i would do a certain type of video on my channel and then i'd kind of get bored of it i'd do another type of video and i kind of get bored of it do another type of video and i'm not honestly beyond that stage really i'm still probably like someone asked me a question on uh instagram the other day like what's the plans for the youtube channel or something uh just in a q a thing and i said oh it's get to a million subscribers in the most inconsistent and disjointed way possible <laughs> because I'm not over going, ah, oh, do you know what? This is boring. I'm going to do something else, right? This is boring. I'm going to do something else. Um, but I'm at least now more aware that that channel has to make money. Right. Yeah. And, and if I want to do something else, that's purely for me, I want to make a little vlog or make a different kind of video or whatever, I should put it on a different channel. Cause then you get, you get, the purest form of each, right? Without trying to detract from something 
you love by turning into turn it into something you make money off right mm. now i don't want to i don't want to kind of uh, i don't want to give the impression that my fitness videos are a chore to me like don't get me wrong i enjoy doing it like i still enjoy doing it but would i do it if i wasn't making any money off it probably not probably yeah. not not fit not fitness videos I'd, I'd, I'd probably never film anything in a gym ever again in my life if I didn't make money of it. In a uh, gym. Because I'm, I'm bored yeah. of that now, right? You get bored. You've kind of right? just done it. You've done everything. Yeah. Like, you've done all the push pull legs programs, like, yeah. like everything at that point. Sure. But that's, a, that's very interesting because, like, the focus changes and, like, it's kind of like shiny penny syndrome because, like, someone like yourself now would have a lot of opportunities. Like, I imagine you get a lot of fucking random emails that are all bullshit. But I mean, you get different opportunities to, start different things even like the app you're doing now recently you know so there's a lot of opportunity for it but it's about focusing in on it um mm. and then it's about kind of like what you want to do because like your stuff is very creative like and that's it's a big thing of like i feel like you've always been very curious you've always been trying different things like so like when you're doing different stuff and even like your youtube videos how you kind of maintain that even curiosity to do new stuff because it's funny like you said there about oh you don't know how you're going to like get to a million we're going to do it it's interesting because like I don't think that you're the you're like the personality that's like charting out what next week's video is going to be the following month the following month which other youtubers are doing you know or people in general so it looks like it's coming to you kind of naturally you know and that was the benefit of why it's happened in the first place why it's kind of grown because you didn't bother doing the the, the, the traditional route of it mm. yeah well i mean again it's kind of related to what i said about just not being able to bear stuff that i just don't have time for right and I, the mm -hmm. same goes for when i get bored of something like i just it's almost like i don't have a choice son. i know that i know that the best thing to do to grow a youtube channel is be consistent in the type of content the video format the thumbnail you put out the title be consistent and drill it down and go again and again and you not only do people subs get what they subscribe for every time right because i've got a i've got a i've got a set of subscribers that some of them watch videos where i make some meal prep and some of them watch videos where i do a little like day vlog type thing some of them watch like travelly shit and some of them want me to talk about fucking my own qualified opinions on the philosophies <laughs> of life right yeah. and 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 I, I get that that isn't the most efficient way to run a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. but maybe my brain's not just not the most suited brain to have a YouTube, but that's, I'm still going to do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I know where I am consciously doing like suboptimal stuff on YouTube. Right. I know, mm -hmm. I know, but I'm just consciously aware of that. Uh, and like that's a good thing though, as man. long as you can find a compromise that you are happy with mm -hmm. then that's okay right at the end of the day now right i live a life that i'm pretty you know i'm pretty good with I'm pretty cool yeah. with like uh i'm in a decent enough position right where i can pretty much do what i want right I, I, no one's or at least i've got myself in that position like even maybe probably a, a few months back now i basically just started saying no to everything i haven't done a sponsored youtube video now for like a while i don't remember the last one was probably only a couple of months ago the last one but that was in a contract that was agreed months before that right i haven't agreed to a sponsored youtube video now in a long time and I, I don't really see myself doing it right and that to me is like the best part because now i get enough views that i can make like decent bit of money off adsense uh decent bit of money off my own stuff and some contracts that are mainly posted on instagram for etc etc right now again same with the youtube channel growth right i could make if i want to make double the money that i make now i know how to do it right mm -hmm. i could do that but it but there's always a there's a point there's a goldilocks zone where you can get enough out of every aspect of your life that you're, you're happy with right it, it it is always a compromise you know so i don't think i'd be 
as like mentally satisfied, like content, if I was to drill more into just trying to make money. And equally, mm-hmm. I don't think I'd be as happy if I was to abandon that more and just do just focus solely on videos that I find personally satisfying to make and stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's always that kind of like compromise on like, where can you exist? And to do that, you have to kind of separate yourself from where everyone else is trying to exist because everyone, people, I feel like there's a lot of kind of just tunnel vision that goes on, right? Like, is it all about your channel? Is it all about making money? Is it all about just enjoying yourself? You know, I find that you just have to, in a sense, especially on YouTube where everything is just purely based on metrics, right? How many views are you getting? What's your view to subscriber ratio? Are your views doing better than they used to do? Is it going down, right? Mm-hmm. YouTube gives you this thing, right? Do you, do you upload your podcast on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so you see when you upload a video, it tells you like ranking out of 10. Yeah. Right. It gives you a fucking confetti, man, when it gets yeah, to number one yeah. as well. Like, fuck <laughs> off with that, man. Because you know what? Out of every 10, one of them's got to be the worst. Yeah. By definition, <laughs> five of them have to be below average, right? So does that mean that half the time I upload a video, I've got to feel bad about it? Mm. Like, that's that's the, that, in a sense, like, me having this compromise between content that, I make money out of and content that I enjoy that helps with that. Cause I'm like, well, I don't have to give, that might've been the a one out of 10 for me. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So if yeah. it's not got, if in the first 17 hours and 43 minutes, it's seven out of 10 for views, <laughs> like fuck off. Do you know what Man, I mean? That's the, that's the gamification that like Instagram and YouTube in particular really push. Like same on all podcast platforms. Like I know even with your own podcast, like, that's the stuff that's feeding back. And it's like, that's the feedback loop we're getting. That's negative. It's not the yeah, thing yeah. that you they enjoy want, the most, you know? Right. They want you to, in a sense, like they want you to feel like low level anxiety the whole time about this worst case scenario where gradually everyone just like forgets who you are. No one wants to consume your content anymore. You just fade into insignificance and you have to go back and get a job that you hate. Right. That's the, that's the, that's the ultimate fear in reserve that you're supposed to have, mm-hmm. you know, like Instagram these days, if you're not literally on it, just jumping through hoops, like, right. Oh shit. I've got to make a reel today. You know, then you like, there's so many people I see posting on the stories, like, Oh, is anyone else experiencing this? Cause my engagement seems really low and my posts aren't getting v- shown to that many people. I'm like, you're just in the fucking, you know, you, you're just like a character in the game, you <laughs> yeah. know, and you're not even the one controlling it all. Like it's, mm-hmm. you know, like I've hit, my Instagram is literally dead, mate. Literally like in comparison to what it has been, like, I'm sure I, hit, I'm sure I hit like 300 K followers about four times because I went back <laughs> under the same. So I don't know if I get to celebrate every time. And man, I said you cleared them out as well. Like nothing to you, but like in general, I say a lot of them are just fucking bots. Like if you think about it, like or something, some shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you think yeah, about yeah. like how much you're actually getting in terms of engagement and stuff. But yeah, yeah, it, it's weird, man. It's like a, I actually recorded a, a podcast with last week as well. Around, I think that like because of the fact that all this is public, like you, like, and this is why I was very fascinated with your stuff. Like you know, even the small things like we're all gonna make it, like whatever from the very beginning. The fact that that was so public was the fact that everyone could see it. Whereas like, if you were in the fucking back corner, man, making a business, just, you know, something private, like an e-commerce store or whatever, you could just focus on building that, whatever. But I think it's the fact that we're so exposed to everyone else's, like not necessarily opinions, but everyone's looking. So you got to make it right. Even, even like this, man, like even like this, like I have a, I just get all designs done. It's going through things over the weekend. And I was thinking in my head being like, do I want them good for me? Or do I want them good for how they're going to look and how other people are going to perceive them? And I had that kind of inflection point and it's, it's interesting because like you, you work so hard, I think, well, it depends what type of personality you are, but definitely even on my side in, in your twenties are working so hard to make something successful and by fucking no means is successful. But I'm trying to say that you're probably doing it because it's so public. Um, whereas, whereas like I still have a day job, man, I don't fucking do this full time. 
and like in that you know like no one's looking at it no it's not public you know so uh it's a different attitude i suppose i have um and people are very susceptible to things and this is why i was asking you about pressure and stuff earlier because i think younger people have no fucking clue what they want to do um and really that kind of search for purpose and stuff as well um in those areas whereby you haven't found your thing yet people are susceptible to to the comparison uh, effect really oh for sure like yeah yeah i mean i think i think there's a lot of people trying to do something on social media because it's seen as like it's so, it's seen as like the example of like some kind of aspirational kind of life you know what i mean um and everyone's on social media so much now that you can't avoid like influences man or you can't you know what i mean and like a lot of people are doing it that that definitely shouldn't man you know a lot of people are doing it that def just how like certain jobs or certain careers that you know are completely outside of the internet yeah are not suited to certain people the same goes like you know you you can't be you you just can't be plugged in to the whole like this whole kind of metric based idea of like success like numbers and that like at the end of the day like algorithms are always changing right mm -hmm. algorithms are always changing some sometimes it's not the algorithm sometimes you just got lazy and your content got shitter right sometimes you're gonna have to identify between those things and be okay with like either of them and know what you're gonna do in that situation mm -hmm. right you can't i suppose it does go it's a general thing that goes much wider than just social media and into kind of like societal pressures generally you know uh but it's just the most apparent example of it to me because of the, my life is like everyone around me that's like drilling themselves into a fucking hole trying to get youtube videos out every day or something and like oh you know i had a like how many youtubers have a have a you know breakdown and that uh, mm -hmm. and it's like oh shit uh yeah i'm, I'm burnt out i've got burnout uh, and it's like up until that point right a lot of them were t were like life coaches man it was like i'm a life like i'm telling everyone how to you know because they f because not it's not their fault right they, they forgot that well not just forgot but just they they thought like oh this is the content i should put out this is what people want rather than thinking like what can i actually give you know what mm -hmm. can i give like on a human level you have to you have to strip away every kind of medium through which people view you and all the like followers and views and everything and think like at the end of the day like is what i'm saying or what i'm producing like valuable in any way like is is the you know on a human level would people want to watch it and and if so then eventually you know algorithm or not you you'll get there like despite you know and so i think a lot of people just get kind of uh just just lose sight of that and start putting out a particular type of content and so it's like oh yeah you know this is how i do this this is my morning routine for success and productivity this is that like and then like two months later it's like why i didn't upload for six months because uh, i'd burn out or what the, yeah. or i'm stressed like video crying and that and it's like yeah well you got there man like mm -hmm. you you got there right you you know there's a lot of people doing stuff and not having any kind of conscious awareness of the effect that it has on them like the reason why i don't upload like any more than like once a week on youtube is because I'd have a shit quality of life mm -hmm. because I try and juggle other stuff, right? I'm trying to like do the odd post on Instagram and do this and that. And, and, you know, obviously other things on the side. And I think if I, you know, yes, I can, my channel can grow faster and I can make more money and I can do this and that. But like, I don't want to be like really fucking sad and stressed and anxious for my whole life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For the sake of is, two million followers. Right. Well, well, when you sat there having a like a decent meal or you're on holiday right i think what what difference is is there now like this this is the end point for you 
you know, mm-hmm. this like I'm sat here, right? Someone's bringing me a nice meal. Aren't I just going to be doing this shit like in 20 years when I've got like 5 million followers and making this much money? I'm still I'm doing the same shit, man. I'm going to be doing the same shit, right? <laughs> so all this other shit that doesn't matter is going to like mm-hmm. just be more relevant to me somehow. Yeah, man. I, I, I actually had that thought yesterday. It was, it was like, you know, just moved to Singapore, as I mentioned earlier. And I'm like, here, like fucking, you know, trying to build this and trying to like record more and do things like this. And then at the end of the day, I actually had a story on this as well. I was like, I also just want to fucking enjoy the city, enjoy things, enjoy yeah. times with my girlfriend and just actually have fun as well. Because like to your point as well, like these people are, a lot of people are, you know, producing more like two times a week, uploading podcasts, or uploading YouTube videos and whatnot. But then they're either number one, not living true and they're just making up as they go along. But two, they're just getting there and it's just a constant fucking wheel. So it's kind of like understanding your own inflection point of, of, of where you're kind of satisfied at and, it's funny because I feel like that kind of like financial goal, I know you recorded a sick video on that as well, about like when we reach that kind of optimum kind of happy stage or whatever. But I think it's like you just keep on going and maybe you're just, it's just habitual. Maybe you just get down, you're, you're editing a shitload, whatever. And uh, you're not actually taking any, you're not actually enjoying what you've kind of built, uh, which is which is fucking ironic. But some people can balance it well. Um, but again, you know, a lot of people can fall down that kind of trap, you know. So something I'm trying to be a bit more cognizant of, even because uh, for sure. again, what wh- why else is it like 100 episode? Why do I want to get to fucking 500? You know, there's other guys that are leading at 500. If I get to that stage, what does that mean? You know, I suppose the ultimate mm. thing is I fucking hate talking about this, but it's even like that time and freedom. Like there's a lot of there's a new narrative now which is like win back your time, fuck the nine to five. Um, but I feel like that can be kind of difficult to to get that correct. Um. But I suppose, you know, it's difficult to understand like where you want to go next with this shit. People are certainly becoming more conscious about like quality of life, aren't they? It is mm-hmm. the like people are be- becoming more conscious about that, especially over like pandemic and stuff. Everyone was like, "Fuck this job!" Like, you know, uh, the, like all the workforce just left all the shit jobs, and now you know, and like rightly so, and right, rightly so, you know, because uh, there's, I think like for a long time everyone was just there was a lot of kind of tunnel vision Mm -hmm. um and kind of like the idea of what what success is but like again there's there's you have to always think like there is two sides every coin in that as well and like in one sense like you say you might just be getting to you might just get to 100 episodes and think all right i'm gonna get to 500 or whatever like so you know if you're gonna play devil's devil's advocate like you do always also need something to focus on you do you do need something to focus on don't you and so like like you say it is that kind of you have to be brutally fucking honest with yourself as well because if i say if i say to you uh the reason i don't upload more youtube videos is because i think it affects me quality of life uh, but now as as it is now i've got a great balance and i'm happy right but you are, i have to entertain the idea that i might be saying that as some kind of excuse yeah I'm not saying it is, but it might be. I have to, I, I have to, have to uh, like entertain that idea. Oh, uh, actually, maybe that's fucking bullshit, you know. Mm-hmm. And course. so, like, you have to be able to kind of. It's very hard to take that. It's humility, really, right? It's mm-hmm. isn't it? It's hard. It's hard to take that removed kind of view of yourself and think, you know. You know, am I doing this because I'm happy? Am I telling myself that I'm happy? Like, and then again, like, if you're going to contradict that, there's also an element of like, I think it's huge, like, over analysis on oneself these days as well. And like, mm-hmm. so like, the, there are pitfalls all along the way because do you want like ultimate paralysis by analysis? I talk about things in sometimes a, a much, I, I enjoy like conversations that kind of analyze the, the human psyche and i'm particularly interested and always have been particularly interested in like happiness right just as a topic like you know and what contributes to it and what level can you can you reach and can you maintain a consistently high level or is everything just about relative peaks and troughs all this right i'm really interested in it as a topic Uh, but I probably, and, and for that reason, I probably talk about it in a deeper sense than I like to think and live, 
you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I talk because yeah. I, I like entertaining conversations about the topic, but I'm very aware that like, I think a lot of people think too much. Man. I think a lot of people think too much about, is this the precise thing I want to do in my life instead of just having a fucking go and finding out, you know, am I doing this too much or have I got the perfect balance? And I'm a, but I think there's so much kind of paralysis by analysis these days and mm-hmm. ultimately a, a huge kind of self-improvement industry that just encourages, you know, encourages, uh, a dangerous level of introspection i think yeah man <laughs> but i think as well at the same time though you have taken fucking action so like i love that perspective even, even about you the fact that like you're looking at those things a bit deeper but you have gone and taken all those actions like you do have online coaching you do a lot of other different shit and you also just live the decent life so you can take that kind of step back and i'm the exact same man like isn't maybe not happiness as much but definitely fulfillment and purpose huge thing or my podcast that i speak to a lot of people is like how do you find fulfillment and what brings you most fulfillment but it's because i suppose i feel most lost when i'm doing fuck all and I, i'd never ever i'm doing like nothing but you know if i took a bit of a break or I come back from a vacation or, or even dieting man if i'm dieting like very hard if i come out of it after a while I feel a bit lost i'm always kind of like what the fuck do i do now just came back from my beats and i was like what do i do you know there's always that kind of like element of it but i suppose i feel most fulfilled when i have like something that i'm working towards that i'm really interested in uh and then obviously managing uh the amount of input i put into it but uh what would be from your aspect like what like where do you get most fulfillment from that's a tough, difficult question mate i don't really think about it too much you know mm-hmm. like in a sense i am just responsive like i do just like you i suppose how you know I, I get, if I'm doing too much, like if I, if all I'm doing is sat here editing YouTube videos, you know, day in, day out, then I do have to stop and do something else. Right. And then if I'm all, if all I'm doing is lounging about on fucking holiday, like chilling on a beach and that, then you get equal, but opposite levels of like restlessness. Right. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just one step ahead of restlessness my whole life. Man. <laughs> You know what I mean? But it's rest <laughs> but it's restlessness that I'm familiar with now and can and can identify, you know. Um I suppose I get fulfillment. I suppose them I suppose yeah, I mean it's all really obvious shit, man. You know what I mean? Mm. I get fulfillment by putting out videos that I think other people enjoy for a start or get something useful from. So there's an element of just purely like as if, because then you've you've actually like just pulled shit out. All the video is is just pulling shit out of your brain and putting it in a format that it can go into other people's brains. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's mm-hmm. literally just a just a, a medium of communication, right? And so I get one element of fulfillment from that, but also I'm so conflicted that sometimes I think maybe I just want to fucking wander around with no shoes on all day and like travel and fucking eat mango and uh think about life and like write something you know what mm-hmm. i mean like maybe i just want to i just want to get lost in like meaningless fucking philosophical ramblings and uh think about the universe uh, and like i'll get some kind of fulfillment from like you know a foray into that and and just like that kind of thinking mm-hmm. uh and then but i think ultimately like y- you want basics as a human one you want you want basics right you want to be able to have a couple of little hobbies you want to have like a good social circle and social like connections in a sense i get some of that from like youtube and stuff because i feel like at least people who maybe everyone feels this right but i feel like at least people who follow me uh, like at least long term by now they've seen me do so much different types of content and stuff and put so much like long format stuff out you know i used to upload q a's that were like an hour and a half long and shit they've seen so much of me that the very in like like by now we've got a lot in common man. yeah you know i get you man uh for, sh- for sure uh and i like it when someone leaves a comment on my shit and references like something that i said like five years ago i think it's mm-hmm. funny as fuck and i think it's sick and I like thinking, like, where were you then and where were you now? And how have both our lives changed so much and that you're still watching me say stupid shit on 
the internet. Man. That's a big testament to to your fucking character, man. Because like like audiences like are difficult to build. Like they're they're incredibly difficult. They take a long time. And it's funny you said you got a lot of you know a lot of early videos and people kind of stuck around and stayed with you. But it's obviously like to do with your personality and the fact that as you've gotten older, you still had that element of you and people have kind of stuck with it because how much people are like, you know, one video or whatever, they just get, they just get fucking known for it. And then that's the end of it. I think that's why people end up feeling not that kind of quote unquote, like imposter syndrome because they get known for something. Uh, mm. And I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts on this. Even Josh Bridgman was on my podcast a few weeks ago and he said, uh, you know, sometimes he feels very, very like lost with that because he feels like that people attach him to be this world class bodybuilder. Mm. And then as years have gone on, he feels kind of stuck to it. But I suppose for you, you know, your perspective has adjusted as the years have gone on. And like, well, how would you feel about that as well? About even your perspective on different things have adjusted over the years. Okay. So, like, for a start, uh, just to again kind of play devil's advocate. I don't know how many people like really, I don't know how, what proportion of people who followed me from early days still follow me. Right. I know that people mm. float in and out for sure. And my thing is like, I have no problem with that. Right. If someone liked my old content and doesn't like my new content, I, the, not a single cell in my fucking body is offended by that or wants them to somehow keep watching my shit out of some kind of loyalty. Right. Mm -hmm. Would that like, you have to treat and expect pe and expect of people how you would, you know, treat yourself and, and what you expect, what you think is fair for other people to expect of you. I don't want someone to watch a video because it's me or, you know, if they, if they are, I want, I want them to spend every minute of their day in the best way possible. Right. That they think whether, whatever that is doing. Right. So like, Probably over the years, a lot of people, because like you say, Josh was, uh, you know, he was known for one thing and then, you know, now feels a bit like typecast or whatever, right? So probably there's a lot of people that have moved on and don't watch my shit anymore, right? Because back in the day, I was known for, you know, talking about girls and going Ibiza and doing like Tinder videos, man. And when I transitioned away from that, like there's resistance, man. People... Like, it's not like I just suddenly started doing like more fitness focused videos and everyone was like, oh yeah, this is Joe now, this is sick. A lot of people were like, you've changed. Why don't you do this anymore? You when know, you go back oh, to Ibiza. I, I miss the old <laughs> Joe. And I'm like, well, <laughs> well <right>. I'm 29. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you, like, do you want me to, like, you know, the, at the end of, that's why you have to have a bit of like, you have to have a, just a bit of self-assurance, right? Mm. In, in, in what you, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's, it comes down to knowing like what you want, really want to do, right? And what, what I want to put out. And I'm not like, for sure, when I first like transitioned away from that kind of content, I did think like, hang on a minute, you know, am I being, you know, is, am I being unreasonable here? Like, should I, and then, I thought, I, I just thought, well, if I was watching someone and they start stopped making content that I liked and started making content that I didn't, I'd probably just stop watching. I probably wouldn't leave a comment saying, yeah. you do this <laughs> and now you're fucking boring. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, where's the old Joe? Where's the old whoever? Right? I probably wouldn't leave that comment. I'd just mm -hmm. be like, fair play, see you later. No worries. Do you know what I mean? And like, that's what I expect of people as well. Like, you know, I, like, I, I don't think that you can be pushed into your, into your little corner and just keep, you know, a, allowing yourself to be like pigeonholed. And like, like I say, like, I know that changing so much, cause after that, like I, I did do, go through a phase of kind of more travel vlog type things. Right. And I'm, I'm sure I think it was like around 2018 type around, around 2018. I did a lot of those. I'm sure people got pretty invested in those as well. Uh, and then there was a more like everyday vlog style and then like a more informative fitness style, you know, and each time I'm sure you turn people off, but mm -hmm. I'm not mad about it, man. Cause no one's got any responsibility towards me. Like at the end of the day, my job is right. Make stuff that 
some people will like, not the stuff that everyone will like. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if you, th then you end up getting pulled into the, you know, too far that way into just trying to please everyone and not really thinking about, you know, what you're going to get excited about. Because like there's some videos, part of the reason why, even when I do like more fitness informative style stuff now, part of the reason why I try and keep it with a focus on the fundamentals and try and emphasize the uh, kind of just just drilling the basics, right, fitness wise. Partly it's because I believe that, right? And I think that most people can get great results just by doing basic things consistently. Mm. Partly it's because some shit, like the deep science in bodybuilding just bores the fuck out of me. <laughs> it's literally like I'm back in uni, man. Like, so, like I'm reading studies and that, and I'm like, I'm like, this is probably going to make no difference to anyone, right? Mm -hmm. Especially because because a lot of it is so is so like understudied that you've just got like one study that might slightly, you know, uh, indicate that you should be training this way or you should be doing this instead of this, right? But like another study will come out in like six years time and say the opposite thing and then you have to go and make a video again about you know you just you, you're just talking about shit that doesn't really make much difference and that there's very limited evidence for and i'm like do i really want to be like crossing t's and dotting i's when really you know it's not going to make mm. much difference to anyone and so yeah man yeah you uh it's funny because you're gonna make a fucking youtube video saying i was wrong and going back on it and then there's yeah. a new thumbnail and going back around but you know i think one thing you're missing there as well though man is the fact that it's not just about your interest that are changing it's also the other person like the listeners like as i said to you like i would have first seen your videos when i was 19 you know when i was 19 man i was fucking you know an idiot you know an idiot i was drinking all the time had a short bit of cash that i was trying to use to go traveling and then would have got some enjoyment from videos then and then as time when i was on, 25 yeah exactly so yeah. And i'm 26 now you know you so were like six years ahead of me yeah so so, <laughs> so that's so that, that's perfect explanation though because like as time went on you know dipped in and out and then as i started getting like a full-time kind of job then well then i'm not gonna be watching tinder tips every fucking day you know and then so the individual changes and they should adjust you know and it's funny because actually uh, christian guzman is a good example haven't heard with the guy in years and then i just saw him like rock up this year looking massive shredded again and i was like ah oh, these are some sick fucking vlogs watch a few of them dipped in and out doesn't say i don't like the guy it's just the fact that i'm just doing other things in my life you know so i think uh people get kind of caught about the the, the identity thing they get known or something and then they adjust well, well that's it like a lot of people will uh, like like i say a lot of people will just be like oh i don't like this shit anymore turn off and then there'll be a portion of people that do like your audience will grow with you like you say like a lot of people ask me oh what are you gonna do are you gonna be a youtuber in when you're 50 and i'm like well the people who watch me now are gonna be 50 as well do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like, are they gonna be watching youtube like, surely yeah like surely you know everyone evolves at the same time and you just keep up mm -hmm. um and also even there's probably a third group who might think they're not interested in your new type of shit but if you do it well enough they will be man they'll still mm -hmm. see some some uh value in it because like you can't give people you need to give people a bit of credit right especially like when you when you've got some kind of audience on youtube like people are interested in different things as well people aren't just this one it's easy to look at this pool of people and say oh this kind of people like vlogs this kind of people like informative content right but people aren't just this, these one dimensional data points so, you know what i mean people do like, some people comment on my stuff saying oh i like when you do this uh, but i also like these videos and i'm like that sound good you know what i mean so like it's hard to really to really uh even draw too many conclusions about your audience without being too much of a like looking at it too analytically you know what i mean the, the, yeah. underneath everything and that's what gets kind of clouded underneath everything there is a there, there's still humans on there's still just people sat at the other side of a you know, there might be these, there might be like social media strategies and ways to, uh, you know, use the algorithm to your advantage, but 
the end of the day, there's, there's, there's people, right? There's, and most people are normal people like you and me. Do you know what I mean? Like when I, and you don't know that until you start meeting people in real life and you, someone comes up to you and like, Oh yeah, I watch your videos. Or a lot of people say to me, Oh, I used to watch your videos. And I'm like, like, I'm not a fit. Like that's like, that's still just the sound. That's, that's just the sound to say to me. I usually joke and say, Oh, I used to, yeah, what happened? Like, but I'm just, I'm only fucking about, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's just as sound as saying, I still watch your videos or I love them now. People say, like, I've had people come up to me and say, like, oh, I used to watch those videos, but I'm not so, no, it's not so into these. And I'm like, good, Fair. right? Yeah. I'm glad that you thought that that was sound to say to me because some people might be offended by that. But mm -hmm. I, I always want to be, like, I want to be able to talk to people and be, I also want to be spoken to as if nothing is ever going to be taken, like, personally nothing's yep. going to be taken in a personal like and i'm glad that people feel like that they can speak to me like that because that's how i want to speak to people as well you know what i mean i don't want overly fucking there's some shit that i don't like man because there's this weird thing right you'll see this on every and like in a sense this is probably something that is not it's probably bad of me to say this not bad but it might be inadvisable to say right because you know if people compliment me i should just take it right but there's this weird thing right in youtube comments where it's like you're my favorite youtuber you're not like other youtubers who are like this mm. and i'm and i think like i get that you're complimenting me like and i, I appreciate it but i don't need to be your favorite youtuber i just want to be one that you watch and you know and if you get something from the bit that's good like but i feel like it's this strange like it's this strange competitive thing about like you're my favorite youtuber and as, am i supposed to sit there and think oh i'm glad he likes me more than he likes rob lips so, oh yes. I've, I've won screenshot it send it to rob and say fuck you rob. you know what i mean yeah like it's there's this kind of i don't know where that comes from but it's like this like this like comparison to all other youtubers and our joe's like this not like these fake people and i'm mm. like where well, you may have, sometimes it might be right sometimes you i'm sure people are over you know are overly generous to me i'm sure you know but it's still i, I find it kind of i don't know i kind of find it fascinating how there's that tendency towards that and i don't know why i don't know why it's like it could be like the competitive nature just of like shit in general like you know yeah. like being like the top one percent of youtubers or the top 0.1 of only fans there's always the, the competitive side of people trying to, to get to these 100%. levels uh so then it's like when you're at that top and that kind of pedestal that's why it's sick that you just kind of like like your values are the same you know they're just fundamentally the same you just create good shit you want a good life you kind of maintain that because i suppose people do put themselves on an artificial pedestal or whatever as things adjust and it's obviously a, a numbers thing like more cash more reach more engagement sure and then they start thinking kind of kind of differently so I'd, i would say that like you know your values are the same um can you going to speak to anything around that as well as as well as like as as people kind of get older or as people get more successful these can kind of be misconstrued sometimes and maybe like kind of lose the run themselves it, it, it definitely is uh pretty easy to get pulled into like you know uh this person's got that many subscribers and, and also like the thing about what i do right so you have uh you know people have got their own different little businesses here and there but you also have like contracts with like whatever sponsors you you have right so you you your sports <laughs> nutrition your supplement company your clothing whatever, whatever it is right and all and no one really knows how much everyone's getting paid right <laughs> <laughs> so you only find that out when you get together with your mates your close mates right because ones who aren't close fucking bullshit yeah and tell you that oh yeah this this these company these pay me this much to do this and, and you have to take everything with a pinch of salt right because everyone's trying to look like they just fucking you know Didn't everyone's getting measuring right but when you're with your, your close mates like you're the ones that you know will tell the truth to you which i don't have many in in the, what i do i would say rob and i would say uh like marine and then i would say there are probably a couple of others as well 
And I know when I'm talking to them, if they tell me how much my protein is paying them, I know that, that that's how much my protein is paying them. And then we can have a discussion and, and say, oh yeah, well, these pay me this much. Maybe I should ask for more or maybe, you know what I mean? Like, and it's that's the only way, because otherwise it's like, how, how do you know? Man? How do I know? Because there's all these different metrics. There's like, oh yeah, but he's got this many YouTube subscribers, but this many Instagram followers, but he gets this engagement on this platform. And so there's all these metrics and it's like, right, how do I ask someone? How do I price like how much it's, you know, how much I should be charging for this or this, right? Uh, but like if you don't have those close mates, right? And, and even, even I suppose aside from that, you're always like, you're always aware of how everyone's doing, right? There's, if you survive long enough, you'll have a couple of periods where you're the fucking hot shit. Like you have a couple of periods where you're the in-trend person, man. And like, I've had periods where my YouTube channel is growing at like silly rates, like 30,000 a month, right? And then I've had periods where it's like growing at like a few thousand a month. And then I've had periods where it's basically fucking standstill, right? And so like, you'll go through a few, probably a few periods or at least one, right? Where you're, you're the hot shit, right? And at times other people will be the one that's informed this person's like maybe this person's like competing or they've got this so they're doing this youtube series and it's popping or they've got whatever it is right and so there is always this like opportunity if you want to take it right there's always this opportunity to uh like compare how you are doing to how someone else is doing right it's it's mm -hmm. well in fact it's not that I wouldn't say that it's comparing that is bad actually, because that's just a normal thing, right? If I've got half a million subscribers and then I, my best mate's got a million subscribers, it's like saying, don't think about the elephant. You know what I mean? You've mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's an automatic thing, right? I don't think the comparison is bad, but I think it's the reaction to the comparison, which just gets people in a, in a twist, like in a fucking muddle, right? Because <clears throat> at some point right and the thing is as well there's you there's like some people in the space in the industry right are just like known for just being like just sound guys right i've never met christian guzman right but everyone who i've met who spoke spoke to him say he's just a nice guy man. just a mm -hmm. solid nice guy right there's other people now this time i won't name name names yeah. that are just known to be just fucking sly a bit cutthroat you know and like sometimes you'll see those ones doing really well and if you're gonna sit there and obsess about how, how everyone's doing you'll think oh shit but this person's doing really well this person's doing better than me and they don't even deserve it because they're actually <laughs> fucking dicks right yeah and so like if you want to be if you want to react to the comparison in that way and compare everything to yourself right then you can get yourself in a fucking twist right mm -hmm. the, 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 there's just there's just no option to do that if you want to maintain some semblance of sanity and happiness and fulfillment in your own path right there's just no space for that whatsoever in a sense I think getting twisted up about comparisons is like super self-absorbed man super self-absorbed because like what do you want like do you want to be do you have to be like the most successful person at this before you can be content like do you have to mm -hmm. like do you do you, like what do you expect like do you know what I mean it's like you're someone good looking walks past you and your girlfriend and you're like shit does she think he's better looking than me like what do you did you think you were the best looking lad in the world? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Did you, what did you think? Right. It's and probably so, insecurity as well, though. That's yeah, a big well, thing as well, because well, like, but I think you know. they're, they're pretty similar, right? Insecurity mm. and, and being self-absorbed, you know, being yeah. insecure is the other side of it, right? It comes from the idea that you're supposed to compare this, this way. You have to compare this way to these people. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I think it's about influence as well, man. Like, insecurities and influences and like how that like affects like the influencers having influences which is kind of funny but even like that example like rob there or whatever right like if he's at a million subscribers that's good for you because it, it it's like okay maybe i can start doing things that are slightly different than and i should maybe get there and i should maybe work harder towards it you know it's like a good goal similar as i mentioned to you like a uh, colin campbell uh, cambro conversations we're very close great guy honest guy hard working guy 
he's doing fucking great. He's doing a lot better than me. And it's great because we're always bouncing ideas off each other. I could I could have looked at that and said, what the fuck, you know, why isn't my stuff working as much? But I tried to use it uh, kind of like for the better versus kind of for worse. Um, but I suppose it depends on the, how, how comfortable you are with your own stuff, you know. Uh, people should kind of things want things too quickly. And then when you want things too quickly, they're caught corners. So to your point there about, you know, they start doing things differently. Lose your dignity then, man. That's when you start going doing all the other shit that you said to yourself you would never do, but now you're doing it because you felt that that's what you're going to get you to a million followers or whatever. So, yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's just people not being comfortable in those positions initially. Yeah, yeah. I think there comes, a, there comes a point which is like, I would say it's probably linked to your general maturity as a person, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe. But like when you start, like when you can be genuinely happy for people who are doing better than you right that's like a huge personal step right mm -hmm. when you're not just saying you're happy for people it's easy to say oh yeah i'm happy for him doing well when you actually think not, like i want people when when I, I want people to have just sick experiences right and sick lives and i think like this this is going pretty broad but like say someone blows up on TikTok, right? And they go from zero followers to 10 million followers in a very short space of time. And now they're fucking uber rich and they live in a fat LA mansion somewhere doing something, right? Now, my only thought is that I'm glad a, a human has got to experience what that's like because that must be mad as fuck. Mm -hmm. Must be mad. And I kind of get pleasure in people experiencing things even if it's not me experiencing something i think i'm kind of glad that somebody has because that must have been fucking nuts right mm -hmm. and i just think that like there's so many humans having the same experience right because just about just how society works right and there's so many living the same day in the fucking mean man inside the standard yeah, deviation yeah yeah that like it's really I'm glad when I see people outside it, whatever they're doing. And like, yeah. I think you get to not just that, but like, as I say, maturity wise, like you get to a point where you're genuinely happy for someone, you see someone doing well, you just think fair play, mate, fair play. Mm -hmm. That's sick. Like, and then obviously that is, if you know that this person might be, you know, have questionable morals, right. Or be not the most watertight, like, uh, in terms of like principles and that then like what are you going to do about that you're going to get twisted you're going to get twisted up about that and think oh shit but everyone should have it what they deserve but ugh, mm -hmm. you know and like <laughs> the, you, I, it, this, it would be easy to be conflicted about that right and so how, how do you reconcile it some people go oh well i bet they're not happy they mustn't be happy <laughs> you know what some people are absolute huge dicks right but they're still rich and happy as fuck Mm -hmm. it's irrelevant man still irrelevant to you like it just mm -hmm. it just is like what do you want do you know what i mean do you want this like this fairy tale world where everyone gets exactly what they deserve like i think there's a difference between what is what actually is true and what it's worth living your life as if it's true do you know what i mean because i don't mm -hmm. think it's true that everyone gets exactly what they deserve but i think that's the best attitude to have about your own shit do you know what i mean Hundred percent, man. Like I'm not... same with uh, a lot of things. Really, I don't think it's true. It might not be, might not be tr like, it might not be true that we've got ultimate free will and agency over everything we ever do. But you have to live and be responsible as if you do. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? There are so many things like that that you just—it's just the best way to live because it's the best approximation. Like. Mm -hmm. It's not linear, man. But that's the that's the whole thing is that, especially in like any sort of like entrepreneurship, is like. We think that the input equals the output, but it, ne it never does. Whereas in the traditional part, if you sit sit in a company for two, three years, you get promoted, you get a slightly pay increase. That's kind of more linear. And that's where people are kind of looking for that return. And then when they go off to do something else, they're like, oh, fuck, you know, I didn't get this and deserved it. But when you, uh, you explain there really well about, you know, people getting pissed off or seeing success, uh, Rob is a great example. I've always loved this shit, man, from the very beginning. And the reason why is because in Ireland, I'm obviously from Ireland, people would be like super insecure, like super jealous, and be like, oh, you know, fuck that dude. Like always, always, man. People always say, like, oh, like taking photos of my like festivals and shit. Yeah, I remember yeah. my head just being like, this dude, he's super focused. He's on my podcast. I, I really, really respect the dude. Super focused, great attitude, 
you know, really working hard and has got the results from it. And as the years have gone on, like he's all gone on to do, you know, amazing things and he deserves everything. But I think it's very interesting to analyze from like a human perspective how people shot on it. And now they're at the point where they're like, I want a piece of the pie. I'm going to become an online coach over the last couple of years in, in Ireland, or whatever. And they would kind of model their work off kind of what Rob Lipset was doing. But uh, it's interesting because he's someone who took the risk, you know, took the chance, took the opportunity mm-hmm. and uh, things came back and paid dividends. And that's kind of why I kind of do some things that I kind of do as well, man. Like as in, like I've had fucking horrific downturns in my podcast over the time. I've had two Instagrams deleted. Uh, would you believe not selling only fan shit? But <laughs> I remember, like, even when I was doing it, being like, oh, "What the fuck am I doing? Is there better things that I could be doing with my time?" You know. But I kind of just stuck with it because I was like, "I'm interested in it. I think there's a good opportunity from here, and uh, there's a good roadmap if I, you know, stick on path. And it's quite unique. I'd like, obviously, I know everyone started a fucking podcast during COVID, but I imagine ninety percent of them are gone. You know. Yeah. So there's kind of that element to it. Um, I don't know, yeah, I think there's there's a uh it's hard to always be in the right mindset but if you can have like obviously rob at the start must have had a lot of you know i think he says how like when he put his first like video on facebook or some shit he was like shitting himself right because he had that that there's people like that right and some exhibit it more consistently than others and sometimes you might not be able to be like that all the time but if you can have glimpses of thinking, you know what, fuck it, I'm just doing my own shit here. And if people want to shit on it, that's all right. Like, you know, when I first started filming stuff in a gym, I went to this gym in Runcorn, which is like, it's a bit of an old school bodybuilding type gym. gym. And no one was like filming themselves doing workouts there. No one was like, you know, and you'd get, actual looks for it like what's this guy doing who's this guy especially because i was fucking small like tiny like physically compared to like most of the people who train there do you know what i mean everyone like why is he filming himself do that like and that's just a very very small example but now you go in and there's people everyone's filming the shit do you know what i mean everyone's yeah. doing it like and like Obviously, you can't always be detached from what everyone else thinks and if everyone else is passing judgment on you, right? I, I sometimes say this to my, my mom, right? She's She does nothing but make me question myself, right? So <laughs> I say like, oh, yeah, well, fuck what people think. Like, for, and, you know, that's just like some societal bullshit. And she's like, yeah, but you live in a society. You live in a society that has to, you have to be somewhat part of it. Like, you can't be entirely ostracized from it. And like, I think you can't like you you do there's there's uh there's a line between being like committed to your own shit and not being embarrassed being embarrassed about chasing it and then also being like just completely delusional mm-hmm. you know what i mean this the but like where and like sometimes you, you you might stray the wrong side of the line but that's just the game of fucking trying to get things right and you just have to you're gonna swing too far one way and swing back and you know, that's, that's just how you learn shit, isn't it, man? Mm-hmm. Man, I want to finish up on this. Where do you where do you see your next steps from here now? Like, what would be, like, the optimal plot for you now as you look forward the next couple of years and as things are adjusting? Yeah, so uh, my immediate plan, obviously, I have this app coming out. Well, it's technically, it is actually out now, but we did a bit of a soft launch because we were scared of it crashing on a thousand people and didn't want to, wanted to make sure we had the kind of support to to you know cope with that if it happened luckily it didn't happen anyway so this is going to be my focus like now for the next like few well many years i expect because uh like you said previously like i've had a lot of opportunity to do different things right and like over the years i could have been bringing out a clothing brand i could have been making my own supplements i've could have been doing this or that uh and i've never done anything uh because which is pretty weird for someone with the length of youtube career that i've had to never mm-hmm. have brought out some fucking merch or something it's pretty it's pretty rare like you know uh but i never have because i've never i've never wanted to split myself between too many things right and especially if the things that i'm not that enthusiastic about like if i brought out some hoodies and shit like 
don't get me wrong, I enjoy a hoodie next as much as the next person, but <laughs> it's not gonna get me out of fucking bed in the morning. Yeah. Um but this is this is the thing now. I have my one. This is the one focus. I'm just gonna put everything into this one thing because I'm not particularly it's another thing that you get with like social media, like Obviously, there's people like Guzman who've got like a million different businesses and they do them all well, right? But that makes everyone else think that they need seven businesses, right? You need to be CEO of 10 different companies. And if you're not, then you're underachieving, man. Even if they're all shit companies, man. You know what I mean? Even if they yeah. all do fuck all and make you make you like no, no money. Um, and so I never, I was always conscious of that and not wanting to like fall into that. So I, I just want to focus on one thing and, and, perfect it and make it the best it can possibly be so i want to make this app like you know as successful as it can be um mm -hmm. and i and i'm invested in that really and I'm, and I'm, I'm really i really love the idea of having a lot of it does a lot of what i try to do with my videos in a sense uh, i really like the idea of just simplifying things for people and and in a sense taking time away from focusing on lifting because i think if you can make a product that helps people put less time and mental energy into figuring things out and doing things you're just saving people time and getting people results right so that's going to be on my, my main focus uh, which means that i do need to uh still like pump my main youtube channel for you know a good while because that'll be my initial initial source like a, a initial kind of marketing avenue mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually i actually will probably at some point stop doing fitness videos uh, i don't know when it might be in like five years time who knows right uh, and i'll just make i think videos that i like making as a hobby <laughs> i think i will transition into i think how I spoke about separating what I make money from and what I do, you know, out of enjoyment. I think I will continue to do that. And I'll have this app that is my business that I put everything into. And then when I have time, I'll do sporadic YouTube videos on my other channel that are just about completely random shit that I want to, you know, want to that just i want yourself. to produce and get full fill on yeah exactly exactly so i probably eventually won't make money online so much anymore but i think that'll allow mm. me to be to get more out of just being online and you know if you're building a good product man which you are with an app like coming from someone who works in product bear in mind um like it's tough to crack it's fucking horrific to craft crack yeah. but once you do like obviously it's high you know upfront cost but then it's exponential from there you know that's the the opposite to coaching to online coaching we're capped on time and effort and input it's literally yeah. limitless on that on that point so yeah man there's a lot to come with that it'd be sick all right bro i want to wrap up here firstly yeah. i want to say thank you very much i really really appreciate it um no nice and chill nice and chill over an hour but uh it was a sick session man I really appreciate it thanks for having me i appreciate it